Hello and welcome to a new share from BAPCH IGNO, your trusted study partner. Do subscribe to our channel for your psychology lessons and hit the notification bell icon for immediate updates on all our uploads. Also, please like and share our videos so that we can grow as a community. Alright, let's begin. Today we start with Unit 2 from BPCC 101, which is Nature and Scope of Psychology. In today's lesson plan, we will learn about what is transactionalism, psychology and its relation to other sciences, nature and scope of psychology, early divisions of psychology, and subfields of psychology. Our first topic, psychology, its relation to other fields or sciences. To understand the relation of psychology with other sciences, first we must understand the idea of transactionalism. Let us rewind a little. Earlier we had singular disciplines like physics, chemistry, math, etc. But if we put together two or more of these, we have new fields of study like engineering, technology, etc. Okay? So it was understood that one field of study cannot thrive on its own if it wanted to progress and make advancements. Instead, we must acknowledge and understand the fact that everything in this universe intersects at some point to make way for something even better. Plus, climate change, pollution, aftermath of natural disaster, man-made disasters, these are certain world issues which cannot really be solved by one or two sciences. We need scientists from different specializations to come together and put their collective knowledge to work in order to resolve any of these issues. This exchange and working together as a whole is known as transactionalism. Can you name some new areas of study that did not even exist like 200 years back and emerged solely because of transactionalism? Let me give you a few examples. Think of um, biophysics biochemistry, geophysics. Though the basic idea might have floated around earlier, all these fields have emerged as recently as 1900s. Okay? Because of transactionalism, we cannot isolate one specific science from another. Try isolating chemistry from biology, or math from physics, or even genetics from psychology. That's why even though psychology is an independent field of study, it borrows from the advancements in genetics, physiology, neurology, medicine, physics, chemistry, cybernetics and other sciences. Because these sciences developed, we got a new field of study which is psychology. Similarly, once the study of psychology advanced, it began contributing to other disciplines such as sociology, anthropology, economics, political science, management, etc. If there are any working professionals here, you will immediately relate to it when I say leadership qualities and management studies. Think about the qualities needed to be a great leader and how psychology can help us in this regard. So, I think by now it's safe to say that each scientific field of study depends on other sciences in order to expand or advance. Right? Next, coming on to the nature and scope of psychology. All right. So uh, broadly, if we look at all sciences, we have two branches of every science, the academic branch and the applied branch. So in physics, if the academic branch answers the question, why does the apple fall on the ground? The answer is Newton's law of gravity. Now the applied branch would try to take that theory and solve problems from our day to day lives like why can't humans fly or explain rainfall or ocean tides? Okay. Similarly, in 1988, uh, Parmeshwaran and Bina identified that psychology can be broadly classified into general psychology and differential psychology. General psychology deals with the investigation of generalities and similarities in behavior, especially among normal adults, where we use the word normal very loosely. However, differential psychology dealt with observation, measurement and explanation of individual differences. Remember the example we studied last time? Put 10 people in the same room but everyone will behave differently? Yep, that is individual differences. Gradually both branches developed into further like general and applied segments for each category. 
thus we have an overall idea of the nature of psychology moving on early divisions of psychology so like other sciences psychology also started with basic branches which were classified as experimental and non experimental the experimental psychologists are primarily engaged in basic research and study fundamental processes such as learning memory thinking sensation perception motivation and emotion by using experimental method thus they investigate how behavior is modified and how people retain these modifications the processing of information thinking how human sensory systems work to allow people to experience what is going on around them and the factors that urge them on and give direction to behavior the non experimental branch included personality social and developmental processes however many of these academic branches have further sub branches that is developmental psychology has sub branches like psych child psychology adolescence psychology and gerontology right similarly social psychology uh it has an uh, applied branch right and it has given rise to an applied field called organizational psychology so social psychology say we get applied social psychology and then we get organizational psychology next moving on sub fields of psychology so this is also called the scope of psychology in total we have 23 fields mentioned however in this part uh, we will only cover 7 the remaining 16 will be discussed in part 2 of this chapter all right number 1 we have biopsychology this is the biological approach to study human and animal behavior biopsychology which is also known as physiological psychology or psychobiology explores the relationship between biological processes and behavior it investigates how the brain nervous system and other physiological factors influence human and animal behavior an example of the biological approach to uh, psychology would be the fear response the fear response gives way to fight flight or freeze behaviors which course of action an individual takes in their presence of a stressor relies on their biological makeup all right moving on cognitive psychology number 2 it studies the information processing abilities of humans cognitive psychology focuses on how the interactions of thinking emotion creativity and problem solving abilities affect how and why you think the way you do examples of cognition include paying attention to something in the environment learning something new making decisions processing language sensing and perceiving environmental stimuli solving problems and using memory right third we have comparative psychology this is also referred this is also referred to as uh, cultural psycho um, sorry my bad comparative psychology this is also referred to as animal psychology right it is a study of uh, similarities and differences in behavioral organization among animals for example researchers could compare how rodents navigate mazes how birds migrate over long distances and how bees communicate directions through dance or compare how different species learn through trial and error conditioning and even observation next cultural psychology number 4 the study of how cultures reflect and shape their members psychological processes it focuses on understanding how cultural norms beliefs values and practices shape individuals thoughts and behaviors researchers might investigate how these cultural orientations influence social interactions self concept and decision making moving on we have number 5 which is experimental psychology um experimental psychologists are interested in exploring theoretical questions often by creating a hypothesis and then setting out to prove or disprove it through experimentation 
they kind of study a wide range of behavioral topics among humans and animals including sensation perception attention memory cognition and emotion for instance social psychologists may do experiments to determine the effects of various group pressures and its influences on a person's behavior so despite its name it is not the method that distinguishes experimental psychology from the other field because you may think that it is named experimental psychology because we conduct experiments in this field right instead experimental psychology is distinguished by what it studies the fundamental processes of learning memory thinking sensation and perception motivation emotion and the physiological or biological basis of behavior under certain circumstances all right number 6 we move on to uh, my favorite gender psychology gender psychology is a fascinating subfield of psychology that examines the role of gender in shaping individuals thoughts feelings and behaviors There are many things which play a pivotal role in shaping up young men and women and a lot of it has to do with the ongoing stereotypes prevalent in the society. For example, many cultures encourage girls or young women to help out in the household chores, which kind of leads the girl to believe that this sort of work is done only by women. On the other hand, men are encouraged to display their masculinity by being strong, not crying in front of others and taught to man up. which also leads a lasting impact on those young kids because that also stunts them emotionally so yeah i mean we can all agree gender does play an important role in shaping us to be the people that we are okay moving on learning psychology number 7 the last one in this segment it studies how uh, individuals acquire knowledge new knowledge skills behaviors and attitudes through various processes Okay tell me how many of you remember that you learned your abcds long before you started school how is that because you were taught at home either by your parents or grandparents also if you think about it we could communicate and complete sentences in our mother tongue without knowing anything about grammar how because we grew up listening to that language in our homes and our cognitive abilities helped pick it up another example would be uh when you learn riding or when you start learning how to ride or drive a vehicle or pick up a new sport a uh, musical instrument anything how do you process learning as an individual this is what we study in learning psychology all right we will continue with the remainder of the chapter in part 2 of this unit so don't forget to like share and subscribe this channel take care and see you next week Bye bye